Y'all already know, we back with Storytime Friday. You know the vibes. Go ahead and sit back, relax, grab your snacks, and tune in for this tea. Hey, don't get fucked by none of that shit. So y'all already know, before we get into the video, we gotta do the business promo shout out. The first shout out goes to Wasted with Raya and she sent the handwritten. She said, hey T, thank you for accepting my package for small business promo. My small business Wasted with Raya makes custom waist beads for all sizes. In this package, I've included the Valentine's Day set trio I made for you in February late. I know I'm sorry. I have also included an anklet for you and a bracelet for your daughter. Oh, thank you. I love a good anklet, okay. I included the signature set love hug because you expressed you liked it. You also have a self-love welcome kit for me. I have launched a self-love club where I will be sending women who purchased a kit a welcome kit. The cost is between $150 and $3 monthly. That's not bad. That's really, that's a good price. Benefits include free gifts, free reflection sheets, and motivational blog posts slash emails once a month. If you would like to continue participating in my self-love club, let me know and I will continue to send you my items. I hope you love everything I sent you and I hope you understood this message, LOL. <laughs> I watch and comment under the name Raya's Rocky Road where I also make videos. Okay. Love your channel. Proud of you for growing out the head spaces you've been in. XOXO Raya. Thank you, girl. So this is, the, this is what the self-love kit comes in and it's just like self-love goals that you write down this is really good i'm gonna use this girl why i needed this this is completely random or maybe it's not because you have to measure your waist for the waist beads i needed this thank you i know i could have ran down to the walmart to get it but i just didn't i appreciate this and then she just sent a lot of business cards, which girl, I'm gonna go, uh, y'all know how people be going to like Walmart and Target and just like putting their business cards all around. That's what I'm gonna do. When y'all send me y'all business cards, I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna just put them all around the store. Cause you never know who gonna be needing what, you know, what they looking for. If, did that make sense? That ain't make no sense. So she sent a bracelet and an anklet. I'm guessing this is from the Valentine's Day set. This is still cute. I'm still gonna wear this cause I love a good anklet and bracelet. And this is the 28 inch waist beads. Y'all know summer is right around the corner. Can't y'all just see y'all self on the beach with this around y'all little waist? Oh, here's a red one. Y'all, I like this red one. Red used to be my color. Oh, this one is cute. Look at that. And I like how it got like a little bit of gold in it. It got like little stones on it. This gonna be so cute. This is definitely giving beach vibes. This is the last one, a real cute white one. It almost looked pearl. White is so versatile. Having a white anything would just really come in handy. So I really like this one. So the next business shout out goes to Bastille and Costa. They sent a handwritten and they said, hi T, thank you for teaming up with Bastille and Costa. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, we are excited to be able to collaborate with you. We are a small black owned business in the Bay Area. We create and promote clean, sustainable, slow fashion and can guarantee great quality within our clothing. Our brand is targeted towards fun creatives who like to think and look outside of the box. We are not for the shy and provide fun, groovy clothing for risk takers. We hope you enjoy our lavender and burgundy fairy tops, handmade from satin and flowy chiffon fabric. We also will give you a discount code T15 to share with your followers and get 15% off their their purchase. Oops. Hope you enjoy B and C. Oh, this is cute. So this is the top. This is real cute. This is, y'all, I love um, sleeves like this, first of all. It's so big. It's real cute. I would need to press this out though. It feels real good. Okay, this is satin for real. Two little things so you can tie it up. So it's like a crop top that you tie up in the front. Real cute, this is the burgundy one. Oh, this is the lavender one. So cute, they sent over a medium. Cause y'all know my sleeve kind of like that right now. Except theirs is longer. This is cute. I'm gonna have to try this on. Cause even though this is a medium, it still look kind of big. But like I said, y'all, this, this feels really, really good. It's definitely satin. 
Once again, thank you so much to Wasted with Raya and VNC for sending over your products. I loved everything. I will have everything in the description for these two companies. Definitely check them out. Both companies are ready for summer, okay? Get your waist beads, get your cute little crop top. It's that season. They on time with this. Before we get into this video, y'all make sure y'all like the video on your way in, on your way out. Leave me a comment because I love talking to y'all in the comments. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and your bell notifications are on so you can be notified every time I post. Okay, because a lot of y'all be like, y'all ain't getting a notification, y'all getting unsubscribed. I don't know what YouTube on. Um, they look tri they're tripping, they're tripping right now. But just make sure you be subscribed, okay? Because you don't want to miss this tea. Right into the video. All right, if you have not seen last week's two story times, I suggest you pause this video, go on, on over there, catch up, and then come back to these. I will put those two story times in the description box in order. So watch them in order. You have to watch them in order then come back to this one otherwise you will be confused please don't tell me in the comments you confused because i'm telling you now so hopefully you don't skip this part <laughs> if you do that's why you confused picking up from last week's video y'all already know the chaos that happened i went to the room did a lot of self-reflecting did a, a real a stress cry which was actually like um it was a release that cry, those type of cries when I like get into that kind of situation and stuff, I don't necessarily cry because I'm hurt. I cry because, wow, I cannot believe this happened or I can't believe I act like that. And I have all these pent up emotions that just need to be released. So those are always the best cries, the, the cries of release. Woke up the next morning, eyes puffy from crying. I get up, do my morning routine, warm my baby a bottle, whatever, whatever. It's like going on like a normal day. So we had a sliding door in the room. It was like a glass door, kind of like a patio door. Um, not a patio, would it be a patio door or a back door? Say you got a house and you know your back door is a sliding door. Okay, boom, that. Cause I ain't trying to confuse y'all. Sometimes I'll over explain and confuse people. So yeah, I just opened a back sliding door and let all the fresh air come in and get that negative energy out. Cause it was a lot in there. Basically, the roommates was gone all day. And like looking back, they had went to Amanda's like family home in not Houston, but like in the city. I'm pretty sure Amanda went home to her dad house to talk to her dad about everything that just happened. <sighs> That's going to come. That's going to come. I'm getting ahead of myself. So yeah, they come back like later on that night. They check on me. They don't really say too much and whatever. The next day come, I get a knock on the sliding back door. It's Dre. He... <laughs> I don't know if he jumped the fence or just like went through the back gate but yeah he's at the back door talking about how he left some stuff and he got to get some stuff I'm like whatever mind you he ain't have much of nothing okay so I told y'all he packed all his little stuff up and it took about two hours so I don't know what he could have possibly forgotten but he said he did for his um let him in, whatever. He just rummaging through cabinets, going through drawers. Not he ain't picked up nothing yet, but he just going through everything. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just finna sit here, chill on my phone, act like he not even here until he leave. After about like a few minutes of him rummaging through stuff, he like, did they talk to you yet? And I swear I did not want to speak not two words to him. But I'm like, I already know what this is. I'm just finna ask him like for what. So I'm like, nah, for what? He was like, they gonna talk to you. They gonna let you know that you gotta leave by the end of the month and blah, blah, blah. And so I'm like, yeah, that's, I figured that I already knew that was coming, you know, cause of everything that happened, of course. So basically he was like, well, what you gonna do? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, just leave me, why are you talking to me? You good, you at your homeboy house, you staying over there. So just worry about you. Cause like, that's, that's basically what he's saying, like, what you gonna do? Like, I'm good, you know? So what you gonna do? That's how I took it. So yeah, that was pretty much the conversation. I did not want to talk to him. I'm pretty sure he could tell. He, he stayed for like maybe five extra minutes just to like kiss our daughter, hold our daughter, whatever. Then he left. Okay, bye. Later that day, I get a text from the roommate. Well, actually Amanda, not both of them. I get a text from Amanda and she was like, basically like, hey, we need to talk to you. So I'm like, okay, can you give me 20 minutes? Like I'm trying to put my daughter down for a nap. And she was like, okay, cool, whatever. I finally walk out, walk into the kitchen area. They both sitting at the uh, table, right? And I swear y'all, them sitting at the table, it gave me a flashback of when I used to get in trouble as a kid. Like, and then on top of that, Amanda, not more, not really Jonah. Jonah just agreed to everything Amanda said. I mean, that's her man. So of course he's, he's going to be her yes man, but it was more so Amanda. And I think Amanda was actually, I don't actually, you know, I ain't even for the lie. I don't know how old Amanda was, but her appearance was like much older than us. Like we was like in our early twenties at this point. 
and she looked about let's just say that she looked very very much older than the rest of us she just kind of had this old lady feel to her you know what i'm saying i don't know how to explain it but so anyway i'm walking out and i'm feeling like oh hell no nah, i don't like this vibe like i feel like i'm about to get in trouble like a little kid so they both sitting at the table i'm like okay i'm gonna sit at the table too she starts the conversation off like so last night was really intense and we we've already spoken to dre he said that he would speak to you it's not anything personal but me and my dad agreed that like we don't want to necessarily run out the rooms anymore and have roommates. And I was like, okay. I was wondering, in my head, I was wondering, like, how is she going to do it? Like, what words were she going to say? Like, oh, you have to just get out. Like, we don't condone that. Just be straight up. Or was she going to, like, beat around the bush with it? So she took the beating around the bush route, which is, like, fine. I mean, either way, it's the same outcome. But I just... She chose the family route. She was like, yeah, me and Jonah, you know, we're starting a family and we need the extra rooms. We need the extra space that it is that it that. And I'm like, OK, yeah, no, I get it. I completely understand. And da, da, da. So then she was like, um, we'll give you to the end of the month, you know, to find somewhere else, find out, figure out what you're going to do. And basically, yeah, you can pay us the rent when you get paid because Dre hasn't paid the rent yet. So I was like, okay. Mind you, before this, before the altercation, I did think the rent was paid because he told me it was. So another thing that night when he was like, I don't know how you gonna pay the rent. I don't know how you gonna do it out. I mean, I heard it, but I didn't process it like that. But them just telling me that he didn't pay the rent. I was like, what? Cause mind you, the rent is due like on the first. It was like, at this point, it was probably like the eighth or the or something. I don't know. So I'm like, dang, am I gonna have to pay the late fees too? <laughs> which yes i just was like okay that's fine because i get it like we disrespected their house we dragged them into our drama and honestly that's the only outcome it could have been after that conversation it pretty much got like unintentionally weird just because i don't know i felt like it kind of went back to the way it was when we first moved in the house and we didn't really know them and it's crazy because we especially dre like he had formed more of a, a relationship with them because I mean, they was all smokers. So <laughs> I feel like they was closer. But I feel like we was all kind of close. At one point, we was all having dinner together, sharing everything, and that is that it was cool. And it was weird for it to, it to just like revert to back to how it was when we didn't even know them. So yeah, I stopped coming out the room a lot. Just and it wasn't even intentional. I just was like, I didn't feel like, you know how when you live with roommates, if you've ever had a roommate, you gonna relate. You don't always feel like speaking and talking and being fake nice, and then. When y'all both just speaking because you see each other, it, it gets awkward. You're like, oh, hey, yeah, <laughs> I ain't feel like speaking, but hey, <laughs> you know, it's weird. So I ain't feel like doing that. Dre and I, we still weren't really talking. Like, at least I didn't want to communicate him, with him, but we had to because I had to work. And at the time, he had the only car. So what he would do was he would go through the back gate, knock on a sliding door, like, and he would also park this car down the street. I don't know why he didn't want Amanda and Jonah. At first, I didn't know why. I know why now. I didn't know why he was doing, like, the most. Like, why you just can't pull up in the driveway, knock on the door. I'm here to watch my daughter, blah, blah, blah. It was like he was avoiding walking through that front door. So he would always use our back sliding door in our room. He would watch our daughter until I got off work, and then I would come home, and he would just dip. Yeah, so that little routine go on for like a few days, maybe like two, three days. And then um, one day he come over a little extra early because I got to go to work. So he come over early, I guess, because he wanted to talk and tell me that he had to go to Cali for to do whatever tree mans do. OK, the ones that get it, get it. The ones that don't, you're just not going to. He had to go to Cali to handle his business. I don't ask questions. I honestly and very literally did not care. But he tell me that he go on for like four days. And I'm like, whoa, I can't take off for that long. Like I only get two off days. I'm not, I can't call in for two days. So he was like, well, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need four days. I need four. First of all, and another thing, y'all, I promise you, and I swear he did not need four days. The stuff that he went down there for literally took one day. And I don't even mean 24 hours. He's literally gone down there for one day. And I do mean 24 hours and did a turnaround flight. So come on now. So I'm like, no, I got to work. Mm -mm, that's not going to work. I'm so sorry. Like maybe if I put a request in for one day, they might give me one day, but I don't see them giving me two days because like I said previously, I had been calling in a lot and like having to work around his schedule for my job. So, and then I had just started working there. I don't even like calling in when I just started working at a job for the first three months. I have been calling in a lot, being late a lot. And I'm like, they gonna fire me. 
and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be screwed. So I wasn't trying to do anything that would jeopardize my situation. So if he was going out of town like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think I only needed that Sunday off. So I just told her like, listen, I don't know. I came up with some lie and they actually gave me that one day off. So yeah, I got off the weekend and his flight was supposed to come back on Monday, which I had to work on Monday. I was closing the store on Monday. So I had to work like in the afternoon and his flight was supposed to come back in the morning. So I'm like, okay, good. Everything is lining up good. He leave, whatever. Whole time he gone, we did not speak one time. I'm thinking everything going according to plan. Usually on the last day, like the day that his flight was supposed to come back, he called me what is the early flight and he like hey can you make sure i'm up and blah 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 and i'd be like yes yeah. so i call him he didn't do that this time because obviously we were not on good terms so and i actually ugh, i thought about calling but i was like nah he got it whatever really i was like he got it f him <laughs> i'm thinking everything good everything going according to plan until i get a phone call from him around the time that he's supposed to be on the flight so I answered like, hello, confused as hell, because what happened? I know it's some BS. He answered like, man, he don't even say hello, just man, you ain't gonna believe this shit. In my head, immediately, I don't. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just rolled my eyes and I'm like, what? Like, what happened? So he was like, man, I'm at the airport. I done overslept and I missed my flight. Cat. That was my first thought. Well, not literally cap, because we ain't say cap last night. I mean, not last night. <laughs> back then, we ain't say cap back then. But I'm just thinking this motherfucker lying. He lying and because he wanted to stay an extra day. I told y'all it was like pulling teeth for him to get that fourth day taken off. So I'm like, he did this on purpose. Matter of fact, I'm not even thinking he did this on purpose. I'm thinking there was never a flight scheduled for today because he has done something like that before. In the past, he told me like, Okay, my flight's scheduled to come back on Sunday. He called me on Sunday, man, I missed my flight, da-da-da. Whole time, his flight was scheduled to come back on Monday anyway. Like, he would buy a one-way and then get down there and then schedule a flight back. You know what I'm saying? He just lied, basically. So, I'm like, okay, he did this before, so he doing it again. You lying. So, we going back and forth, and we're not yelling because, honestly, I didn't even have yelling in me the way that I was drained. So, I'm just like, bruh, I have to go to work today. I've been calling in too much, trying to work around your availability. And he was like, man, I ain't, I ain't trying to do this. Like, I overslept. What you want me to do about it? Blah, blah, blah. I've been on the airline. I've been on the phone with the airlines, basically just repeating himself. Like, basically, uh, did you not hear me? Do you not understand what I'm going through right now? And I'm like, because I'm thinking he lying, I don't have no compassion for you. I'm like, oh, why the hell did you fall asleep in the airline? I was tired. Da, 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 da. Man, I was trying to handle business. Handle business. Handle business. I had to handle my business. I'm just like, okay. I remember taking a phone from my uh, face like this, not because he was yelling loud or anything, but just because I didn't want to hear the bullshit. So finally, I'm like, you a liar. Why would you do this, blah, blah, blah. You filed for that. You know I had to go to work. And now you're jeopardizing my job. Finally, he snapped and he was like, I ain't try to do this shit, man. Like, he didn't yell or anything. He was just like, I ain't try to do this shit, man. I spent all my money out here. I don't even have nothing to be staying out here an extra day. I've been on the phone with the airline. I'm trying to get them to reschedule my flight because I can't wait for a refund. I'm gonna be out here for, I don't even know how long, four to five days waiting for a refund. I need my stuff rescheduled now. So I guess he just heard in my tone that I didn't believe him. And he was like, you don't believe me? You don't believe me? Here, here the airline number, call him on three-way. And I was like, no. And he was like, no, call him, call him. Call him on three-way and you'll see da da da. So I'm like, all right, he pushing it. So I'm gonna call his bluff. When he gave me the number to call the airline, I'm like, okay, maybe he is telling the truth because a lot of the times, like the majority of the time when he's telling the truth, he will do stuff like that, like to prove it to me, kind of not go far, but he would do extra stuff to prove it to me. Like, let me see certain things or give me certain phone numbers, whatever. So I called the airline, let him talk, and he was telling the truth because they was working on rescheduling. And he said something like, oh, sorry, the line got disconnected. Um, I guess Dre didn't have good enough signal in the airport. So he needed me to call anyway because his line kept dropping and if his line dropped, basically I would still be on the phone and all I would have to do was call him back, you know? We on the phone with the airlines for hours. They was giving us the run around, transferring, transferring, transferring us to so many people. The lines kept dropping. We had to keep calling back. Dre getting frustrated. I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, bruh, the time is going by and if he don't catch a flight soon, I ain't gonna have time to go to work. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna be able to go to work because who's gonna watch my daughter? And for the people being like, um, Amanda and Jonah could have watched my daughter. 
my daughter was like a few months old no i mean i understand some people have to have their um, kids in daycare that young but i just wasn't comfortable basically the airlines tell us that we had to call another number and they gave us the number and they was like well we can either because they we had to call the other number and the other number had to give us the answer or something basically we needed to stay on the phone with the airline too so i'm like how is anybody gonna call them because i have you on three ways right i needed to call another number about switching the flight or whatever um i think there was a small fee that needed to be paid well actually one small i think it was about 200 or 100 dollars that needed to be paid, I had to call another number. So I needed another phone. So I asked Amanda for her phone. I go up in there, I ask Amanda for her phone. I'm letting her know, Dre's stuck in California, I gotta work tonight, we're trying to get him another flight, he don't got no money, da da da. I mean, sometimes you just gotta keep it real. So she was like, yeah, of course, you can have my phone, blah, blah, blah. So the, the man give me the number to call and I call the number. I'm on, So basically, I'm on hold on two phones. So yeah, Dre's trying to make small talk and it's just like so crazy how this happened. He trying to make small talk. And he was like, well, did they talk to you? I'm in the room. She I, she let me take her phone to the room. I guess she didn't really have nothing in her phone because me, I would have been hawking over my phone. You ain't gonna go through my stuff. And he was like, did they talk to you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We talking about it. And he was like, yeah. They said you gonna have to get out by the end of the month, huh? Da, da, da. Just like, whatever. So I'm like, mm-hmm, hold on. He talking. And I'm just like, I know they be talking. I got Amanda phone. So let me look through that message and see exactly what they be talking about. Because I don't know, he wasn't trustworthy to me. So I wasn't believing everything he said. So I'm like, let me go see. Lo and behold, lo and behold, it's Dre talking so much shit talking so much shit, like yeah i'm a, i'm taking her ass to court i'm gonna get my daughter and da 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 this and da 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 that and I, I went just all kinds of stuff and i'm just like jaw dropped i even see the messages where amanda had talked to him like yeah you guys both are gonna have to get out by the end of the month and my dad thinks this and my dad said this and blah 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 which she didn't even mention her dad to me i guess she mentioned it because i guess dre do business through her dad dre was like nah yeah i'm good i already found the place that's on her she gonna have to figure out what she gonna do and blah 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 i'm good i'm over here at so-and-so house and blah, blah blah because the dude house that he was at first of all he had two homeboys but i think he was more so at the house like a few houses down and then he had another homeboy that had an apartment so i guess he would go over there and sleep on the couch or something i don't know so i'm like wow wow this fucking traitor really talking mess about me to somebody else loyalty should have known he ain't had no loyalty <laughs> i don't even know why i thought anything else after i get done like going through her messages with dre i didn't go through nothing else in her phone um because that's all i wanted to see i, I wanted to know the truth and i knew that i wasn't going to get it from him and who knows i probably wasn't going to get it from her either so after i finished going through that i go back in the area that they're in just because i know <laughs> if i gave somebody my phone i would want them in my like vicinity i would want to see them long story short the lady come back with the information i'm exchanging the information i'm talking on two phones it got very confusing but we got it done the flight was switched the i mean the flight was rescheduled and there was a fee that I had to pay over the phone for him. So not only did I just figure out this BS, I got to pay for you to come home. And I was pissed because I don't like you right now all over again. I give Amanda back her phone because that's done. When the man started giving off the options of flights that they have like available, the next thing they had available was the next afternoon or something, evening. And I was like, tomorrow evening, not only am I going to have to end up calling in today, I'm going to have to call in tomorrow too because I closed both of those nights and there was no way that I was going to make it if his if his flight came in in the evening time. After his flight got rescheduled for the next evening, before we got off the phone, he was like, can I send him? He asked me to send him a money gram through Walmart because he didn't have no money. He didn't have no money to Uber. He didn't have no money to get a, a room to stay in. He was going to have to spend a night in the airport. So I was like, yeah, because what I'm going to tell him, no, star bitch. Like, no, I'm not. I would never do that to anybody. So I'm like, whatever. Jonah must have overheard it. And he was like, you want me to take you to Walmart? I'm about to leave. I'm about to go in that area, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, you don't have to. And he was like, no, it's no, it's fine. You got a car seat and blah, 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 blah. 
And so I was like, yeah, that is going to be a lot to get a car seat up in the Uber. So I was like, okay, thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. I know at least one person going to ask why we didn't send through Cash App or Zelle or anything like that. First of all, I didn't have none of that. That stuff, if it was around, it wasn't popular. Y'all got to remember that all that stuff just became popular for real. He actually had to walk to a Walmart. So it was like a lot, actually. I'm saying it like it happened all quick, but it was like a lot to like work through because he had to search the nearest walmart to the airport walk there it was a lot so i sent him like 60 dollars. y'all always over send because what why did i have to send him 60 20 at the most to get something to eat all you need is something to eat i sent him 60. yeah i sent him money gram go back home i'm so secretly mad at him he wanted to talk on the phone and stuff and i didn't want to talk but i was like this is a fine time to bring up what I've seen because I can't let it go. I can't let something go that's heavy on my heart. And then the way that you made me feel talking all this mess about me and threatening to take me to court and stuff like that, as if child, I be wanting to say certain things, but I, I'm just not, I'm just not. I had to bring it up in a way that didn't make me look crazy <laughs> because I did go through Amanda phone. So I'm like, all right, hold up, let me see. I'm a lie, I gotta lie. And you know what? This wasn't that much of a lie because I was talking to Amanda and Jonah and we did, this topic did come up, but I just said that everything that I saw in the messages, Amanda told me. So I'm like, I was talking to Amanda and Jonah and they was telling me this, this and that and how you said that you were going to take me to court and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah about my daughter. And he was like, man, what? Yeah. And he was like, man, what the hell? Da, da, da. Yo, I, when I was telling him this, I didn't even expect him to get mad. I expected him to be like, I was just saying all that out of anger and blah, blah, blah. But he got like livid. I was like, first of all, don't be yelling at me because I'm not the one saying that I'm going to take you to court and get full custody of our daughter. That's you. And he was like, man, fuck them. They want to talk all this shit about me while I'm not there. Everybody always want to talk shit about me. Everybody always was <laughs> I promise we was on the phone, but I could see it. I could see everything he was doing. I know his gestures. You know how you could hear when somebody gesturing on the phone? Yeah, I knew exactly what he was doing. So I'm like, oh, here we go. Mr. Victim, but I'm going to let him go on. So he was like, I bet they ain't tell you what uh, they said about you. I bet they ain't tell you that. And I'm like, what? What'd they say? what they say yeah yeah they talking all that shit they ain't tell you that it was like pulling teeth to get it out of them it was like they said you gotta get your ass out i could stay but you gotta leave and i chose not to stay without you and blah 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 mind you i saw the text messages amanda had telling him saying that we both had to get out why are you lying sir why are you lying I'm just letting him go on his little tangent of lies. And I'm like, bro, this is what I be talking about. I'm thinking to myself, this is why I can't trust him. He is a liar. Because you ain't even have to say that. You literally, I feel like if he literally would have said anything else that I didn't just see proof of, I would have believed him. But I'm thinking, bro, I just seen the messages with my own eyes. I doubted my eyesight for a second. Like, did I even just see that? Was I tripping? Did I read it wrong? Because she said we both had to leave. And you talking about they told you you could stay, but I had to leave. And you wasn't going to leave without me, bro. First of all, <laughs> do y'all see the pattern of how he always try to act noble? Stop, Stop it. it. Get, get some, some help. help. Long story short, he come back. We get back to our regularly scheduled program. I go back to work. I got called into the HR office about my attendance as expected. Um, matter of fact, I think I even got wrote up. And that was like my second write up. So one more and I'm gone. So I really had to just be walking on eggshells, make sure I'm getting to work extra, extra early. So one day I had to work, he come back over, he come over early, giving us enough time to talk. So he come over and he was like, man, F the problems that we have right now, we need to figure out what we gonna do. And I'm thinking to myself, are we, are we again? We, we now because, <laughs> oh, you speak French now. The other day I was basically on my own. You came here to get your stuff, which by the way, I, for, I don't know if I mentioned this or if I forgot, he ain't get nothing. He didn't take nothing from the house. When he came rummaging through everything, he didn't get nothing. It was basically what you gonna do. Basically you on your own, but now it's we again, I was confused. So he was like, yeah, you know, we need to come up with a plan. I'm under pressure and da 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 And I'm like, under pressure? 
You stressing? Why? So he going on and on like, yeah, if my shit don't drop, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be flat broke again. And da -da 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 -da. And I'm like, that's why we are we again. That's why. I don't know why it didn't hit me at the airport, but it finally came together with him just going on his little rant in the room. Knowing his pattern, it's not hard to figure out what happened. He went to Cali with limited funds, did his treatment business, <laughs> And then whatever he had left, he probably found a casino. He liked fast money, so casinos is love at first sight for him. He found a casino, risked it all, and took an L, the biggest L, the whole L, all the L's. L, L, cool J. He took all the L's, bitch. <laughs> and ended up with nothing. That's not the first time it happened, so it was easy to figure out. I, don't, I honestly didn't know why I didn't think about it. It was like I had a fucking epiphany moment and it all just came to me like, oh, that's what happened. That's why we can be a we again because when you thought you was good, you was at your homeboy house and you basically left me high and dry. That's how it felt. Yeah, he going on and on like, have you found any places? Have you been looking still? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I've been looking, but without the proper amount of um, checks, money on the check stubs, it's kind of like irrelevant, whatever. He was like, well, I'm gonna look around. I, I probably know somebody that need a roommate. You ain't even gonna need check stubs and blah, blah, blah. I just gonna, I know, I know some people and da, 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 this, da, 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 da. I can take over somebody lease. Somebody was gonna sublease the apartment. So two people name is on the apartment. One moved out, one was gonna start renting out his room. So we didn't have to go through and do no paperwork and none of that stuff. So-and-so gonna be our roommate, which was his homeboy. And I was like, another roommate situation and he was like we gotta take what we could get in this situation we gotta take what we could get and i'm like okay i guess you're right but whatever like what what could i say you know what i'm saying because i'm not offering any like alternatives because I, i'm trying to do stuff the right way and it's not gonna get us nowhere because we don't have what we need to have so if you found a finesse then let's finesse it that's just an example of how we would just like draw each other back in to the relationship you know what i'm saying because it should have been over after everything that happened the night before or that one night it should have been over we said unforgivable things things you can't take back things you will never forget it should have been over but that's just how we would get sucked back into each other because we we felt like we needed each other like let's just do this one more thing together until we get on our feet and that this that that and then on top of that, we was both content in the relationship. We both didn't want to start over. It was just so many factors that just kept us together for so, so long. With that being said, over the next few days, he basically moved back in the house. He moved back, well, back into the room. Cause <laughs> let me tell y'all. So he moved back, right? But he would not step foot through that front door once again. But this time it was worse because like he was actually sleeping there, eating and stuff. But but at this time, the roommates was mostly gone because Amanda due date was approaching. So they went back to live with her dad or not even live, just like stay with her dad more so because they wanted to be close to the hospital. When they were there, though, he did not want to step foot inside that front door. He would always go through the back gate, knock on a sliding door and come in that way. And then, y'all, he would park his car two one or two houses down by the homeboy house his other homeboy that lived by us at, in this house he would park his car over there and then walk to the house that we lived in and then on top of that when i needed to go to work he would come he would walk over to the house give me the keys and tell me to walk over there and leave from that house all because he didn't want to see amanda and jonah he didn't want to let them see the car in a driveway or in front of the house because he talked that much shit and like were you embarrassed or something a whole lot a whole lot of for no reason boy suck it up suck it up because they gonna eventually see you in the house which they did and then after i feel like after the first sighting of him he stopped doing all that he just started park he got comfortable again he started parking in the driveway everything like that fast forward to this particular day on this day he was pretty much track he was stalking the package <laughs> he was tracking the crap out of his package when i say around pack time when his when he was looking for his little package the energy was just bad it was thrown off he was stressing because anything could happen like a lot of the times the the packages didn't arrive so that was that was one time that really just stressed him out so he just in a bad mood bad vibes everywhere don't talk to him like and i hated that like why are you making somebody feel like you can't talk to them putting that bad energy out there i hated that yeah he just over there stressing about that 
I'm feeding my daughter and all of a sudden we hear like three to four loud pops. I'm like, bruh, is somebody, is somebody shooting? And it sounds close. I'm like, that sounds too close. So I'm by the sliding door because that's where one of our beds was by the sliding back door. And I move because I don't want no stray bullet coming through the sliding glass door taking me out. So I moved from by that area of the room. We, we don't dwell on it. Like it was kind of normal almost that area was pretty quiet but occasionally we did hear some shots and then a lot of the times kids was popping firecrackers like you could hear that you know how a firecracker go off and it's just like that extraness after you you could hear that so you know it's a firecracker y'all so about two hours later we hear a loud ass knock at the door dre now he thinking it's his little package so um we open our door a little bit and we see amanda going towards the door opening it so he started walking out because he thinks it's his package. She opened it, it's the police. So he started backing it on up. Yeah, ain't nobody going out there. We, if anything, he finna dip out the slider back though, hop the gate and make a room for it. <laughs> she kind of stepped outside and closed the door behind her, like crack it a little bit. So we can't really hear nothing no more. She out there for a little minute. So yeah, she come back in, closed the door and Dre go back out there. And he was like, basically, what was that about? Like what happened? Oh, y'all forgot. He started freaking out because he thought Something had happened with his package. The popo got a hold to it and now he ain't gonna get it. He thinking he's finna take a big ass loss and he was going crazy, damn near sick to his stomach. Basically, Amanda tell us that there was a shooting across the street, literally, when I say this park was literally across the street from us and the police were going door to door to see if anybody heard anything or saw anything. Immediately, I'm like, I heard shots earlier and like right after me amanda and jonah is like we heard them too we heard them too and i was like i just didn't know what it was i wasn't sure because you know blah 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 it'd be a lot going on sometimes and she was like no i knew that it was that i knew what that was and i was like oh my god i can't believe like something happened right across the street from us when i tell y'all it was so close like we could literally walk out the front door and bend the corner and cross the street the park or if we go outside the sliding back door we can jump the gate cross the street and we at that park like that's how close it was we all basically stay in the living room we talking we looking out the windows we opening the doors peeking out to see if we see somebody walking back and forth anything so time more time keep going by right we keep seeing more and more police cars coming to the point where they blocked off the street like by vehicle you cannot leave our street and then if you walk in you cannot cross the street like you can't go nowhere you basically gotta stay in your house like you gotta stay where you at then they start putting up yellow crime scene tape and you already know what that mean that means somebody lost their life this went on for hours and hours i'm telling you it was dark outside it was dark outside. They had bought a few lights out there. They was out there forever. But before it got dark outside, we had already knew what was up because Amanda, actually me and Amanda went out there, but not at the same time, kind of, but not really. I went out there first. I didn't see nobody. I couldn't cross the street. I couldn't leave the street. So I just went back in the house. Um, Amanda went back out there and she was kind of like walking around a little bit. And I guess she saw a neighbor out there and she asked the neighbor what happened. Somebody lost their life and they was actively like looking for the person. Honestly, I really feel like Amanda shouldn't have told me that because that brought back up some PTSD for me. Like I felt like I was going to have an anxiety attack. I felt like when it, oh my God, when we was at the other house, when we was at her dad's other house and that house got shot up. Oh, it all just came rushing back to me because I was so freaking scared. So to know that somebody just passed away, like somebody just lost their life in the same type of way. Like I got, I got so much anxiety. I didn't want to stand by no windows. Like I really did crazy stuff. Like I was just, I was just standing in, in the bathroom for the longest because that was really the only place that didn't have windows for real it had windows high on the ceiling like two small windows like my, my brain just told me to stay in the bathroom i don't know why but yeah with that person i think the next day we found out this was on the news and everything the next day we found out that that person had been caught that same night but we that night i didn't know that so i was thinking like what if they come back to the scene of the crime and they go to a house that's close and try to break in and i don't know i was just my mind was going far but it turns out they caught the dude that night. And it was like a kid. It was a kid. It was senseless. 
And it, it's crazy because it never fully came out why he did it. It just came out the ages of everybody and like the race and, you know, what kind of truck they was in and blah, blah, blah. But the reason never came out. So that made it even scarier. At that point, I couldn't wait to move out that house. But yeah, y'all, I'm going to leave this story here. I feel like it's very, very long. I've been recording for two hours. So I'm going to leave this story right here and I'm going to pick it back up next Friday for Storytime Friday. Y'all already know the vibes. I love y'all so 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 much don't forget that thank you so much for being subscribed and if you remember y'all already know how i feel about y'all anyway y'all do not forget to like this video on your way out leave me a comment and hit that subscribe button and my like baby said that, bye like that bell button like that bell button it's smash it smash that bell button so you can be notified every time smash, I upload. Like, you smash it like your book. all right stop it <laughs> like i said y'all already know the vibes i'm gonna see y'all in my next one bye Mm-hmm. <laughs>love self-love when you love you you can trust yourself set boundaries forgive yourself understand yourself speak highly of yourself live a healthier lifestyle i love this i love this this is going on my uh bulletin board right over there is it spring yet i'm guessing it's spring now i can't tell y'all it's always hot in texas so i don't know what season it be but this is the waist beads um i know the girls trying to show their belly buttons so and flowy chiffon fabric 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 okay but actually this day felt different it felt good and it's crazy because what happened last night like this was one of those days that just felt really nice like it was a real pretty sunny day sky blue clouds in the sky real light breeze or whatever because i opened the door because i wanted to see if the roommates was home it didn't look like they was home but i still opened the front door to check outside i felt a little light spring breeze even though it wasn't spring it still felt good <laughs> so yeah like i said amanda and jonah they were not home and that was pretty much a sigh of relief because i didn't feel like having that talk with them i just kind of wanted to be to myself i was still processing everything that happened that night I, it was a lot it was a lot and i couldn't believe that it happened i do remember that dre and i we had planned to take our daughter to the park across the street there was literally a park across the street big park and obviously that was canceled now. And I was like, wow, how ironic. Or oh, I don't even know if it's necessarily ironic because it was just a beautiful day. And I don't know, I just feel like we probably would have had a good time at the park. But yeah, that was canceled. I was so drained. I didn't even feel like going to the park. So okay, <laughs> city, city up. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> even though I broke it down in the last story time, I can't even begin to like, explain to y'all how intense it was and it's probably some like little details that i'm leaving out about the situation that situation was a lot it was a lot to take in they probably thought we were both insane but it was like pulling teeth with him for him to bring it back to three days so whatever i don't even say that i don't feel like arguing i don't want to hear it so i'm just okay like i can't even i mean i a lot of the times 90 percent of the time i can tell when he lying but in this situation, I could not tell. I don't trust people. And threatening to take my daughter away from me, like as if you would have all the time in the world to spend and take care of her. <sighs> I'm not even trying to be shady. But reading those messages, I don't think y'all understand how I felt. Reading him talking mess to me, to this girl, our roommate, like it made me feel, it, it gave me that anxious feeling of, me remembering going through his phone in the middle of the night and just not even knowing what I'm finna see up in it and it made me anxious like I, I swear I was nervous butterflies but not the good kind of butterflies the butterflies that hurt I don't even know how to explain it y'all so not only that but now you finna get me fired I'm wasting my my little checks on getting you home and you should have already had this you should have, this is your responsibility. You want to fly out and do all this extra shit? Hint, like, have your shit in order and wake up for your flights. I feel like if you got up early enough to be at the airport, why the hell would you doze back off? Talking about, oh, I set an alarm. And oh, yeah, I forgot to say, I forgot the part where he's talking about he didn't hear the alarm go off to wake him up. Falling in love. When I tell you, he always made me late, just riding around the city, 
and <clears throat> he would come give me the car um, within enough time. And it wasn't even about him coming giving me the car. I needed him to watch our daughter because I, I could have easily Ubered to work. But if he wasn't there, like, I'm not just leaving my daughter. So whatever. It just made sense for him to come and just let me drive his car. So um yeah like he would come with just enough time for me to get there on time you know what i'm saying but not factoring in i gotta find somewhere to park i gotta walk all the way to the back i gotta clock in so i always get there like 10 5 10 10 or something traffic anything could have happened he everybody not a timely person i'm a timely person if i gotta be right at 10 o'clock i'm gonna be there at 9 45 at the latest nothing i don't even want to be a wee at this point this is what it was, but this is how it felt and this is how I took it. This is how it seemed. Basically, we can be a we again because I have a job that we can fall back on and he know I can front him some money again. That's how it felt. And it was just like a lot of BS, basically. I, if I broke it down, we would be here an extra 30 minutes. And I know, I don't know. Some people don't mind, but I know the majority of y'all like get to the point. So yeah, basically he had a homeboy, the homeboy that he always at. Um, his house playing video games when he's supposed to be handling business he needed a roommate because his old roommate went back to live home but the stuff was still in the boy basically he was gonna sublease the apartment okay that there i was gonna confuse the hell out of y'all boom because i was gonna confuse myself <laughs> who the hell is yelling like that is my window up because why can i hear them my window not even that you shut the hell up he was just doing the most extra stuff and then like i said when i needed to um <clears throat> when i needed to go to work sha doing the most no reason fast forward to this particular day everything was going normal well i want to say normal but normal for us because nothing was really normal i was so scared I was paranoid. I I could not do it. In our room, we had we had two big ass windows in our room and a black a black I mean and a glass sliding door. I did not want to be in that room. I didn't want to be in a living room. Too many windows in there. I was oh, I was freaking out. Like who knows? Like the police ain't gonna stay out there all night. What if they come back? I don't know, y'all. That park was just too close for comfort at that time for me. And I was I knew then that I would never go back to that park ever again. And I've never been back to that park ever and it's crazy because i know that violence happens everywhere but when it's close like that i never went back to that park and i never went back to that house that got shot up the closest i've been to that house is like um on the curb on the street parked in front of the house on the street and even then y'all i promise you i was ducking that's actually another story time the first time we went back to the house i was ducking down like I was so scared. I could not. But Dre, he was just like, yeah, let me go up here and chill for a second. What? What? Oh my God. I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, bye. I'm so dead. <laughs> Who are you? Well, I'll be a 29 year old, 85 year old body, but I'm going to be still next to you. Oh, you say that. But once you get a, once you get to be a teenager, you gonna wanna knock my block off, mm -mm. and I know that. Mm -mm. You don't think so? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be nice to you every day. Oh. And then, and then my imaginary friends, and then you, and you are, and, and me and my imaginary friends are gonna turn old together, and then be eight together. No, don't say that. Oh my God, don't say. That. I don't ever wanna think about that. One thing about my baby, her, she got a, she don't have one imaginary friend, two, three, or four. How many? You got like six. Have a like y'all can start a football team around here. You got too many. Yeah, I do. They gonna chip in? I have a lot. Cause she be feeding them, like just wasting food. Who is this for? Oh, this is for Alex. This is for so and so. Girl, they no, do not eat for real. I have Alex and Charlie and James. You so sweet, mom. One thing about my baby, she love baby Yoda. You and his baby Yoda. Okay, come on, so we can go to the store. To get some I promise to make her some brownies, child. Let's get these brownies, child. 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 I told her to stop saying child. I told you to stop saying child. It will be y'all. Y'all ever see them thumbnails? See me? I don't post for thumbnails. I just take um. I when I'm editing and I see like something that will look like it could be a thumbnail, I just screenshot it and I don't never be like. 
I don't ever do that. Like, <laughs> bitches be really out here like, bitch, you look silly, baby. Like, <laughs> you will never catch me out here in these streets posing for a thumbnail. That's what I think about. I don't care if I look like this. In mid-sentence, it's going to be the thumbnail. I don't care. I'm not going to pose for it. Hold on, hold on. Can I, can I send something you? No, this is for the channel. Anyway, um. That was so cute. That's cute. Why are you having my measuring tape? Because I'm halfway skinny. You're very skinny. <laughs> Let me put something else too on my waist. Ham and Amanda end up taking me to Walmart right quick. I go in and I still, even even with them taking me, I still like took the stroller out, packed the stroller into Walmart and everything like that because I just needed eyes on my baby. I just couldn't. This honestly wasn't the first time I had to send him a money gram or anything like that because he took a L in California or Vegas or something like that. So I, I wasn't new to this. Like I was sending money grams left and right because he would have let them kick my ass out and probably he probably would have snuck me in so stop and get some help okay how can i help you oh is that me you did thank you so much i love that i'm gonna write her name on it and write a heart i love you I tell my grandma I love her every day. I know she can hear me. Y'all, I told my baby to surprise me with some snacks yesterday. She came in and she showed out. First of all, she bought me a whole bunch of snacks, but then she bought me some chips and salsa. She brought it in behind her back like this. And she was like, surprise. It was so cute. It was the cutest thing I ever yeah. seen. Oh my God. Surprise. I was like, oh, she loved me. She loved me. It wasn't even the fact that she bought me food. It was just, she was so happy to bring it. It was so cute. 